Hello, December 21st is the official start of winter, so I've taken out from the top of my cupboard my warmest winter jumper and put it on and uh, I, I wear this every year on a video and every year this sweater gets more comments than the books that I end up talking about, which is totally fine because it is a wonderful cozy uh, jumper that I just I love so much and, uh, and so I love being able to take it down and put it on when the weather outside gets cold enough. But I've also picked out 12 books that I'm hoping to read over the winter months. A lot of these books uh, are do have a kind of wintry theme or give winter vibes uh, or they might just be books that I really fancy reading and um, you know it may just be the cover that sort of gives me that that wintry kind of feeling. Uh, so I'm gonna start off talking about them. Uh, the very first one um, is very topical for the season. It's called The Snowball by Bridget Brophy. And this was originally published in the 1960s and it caused a bit of a scandal at the time. Um, but this is a reprinted edition that comes with an introduction by Ellie Williams, um, who's a fantastic uh, writer. And uh, so this is the, the story of a woman um, that goes to a glamorous masquerade ball on New Year's Eve and she uh, in London and she has uh, an encounter there with another masked person um, who uh, she starts dancing with and um, and uh, strikes up an affair with uh, but and so it's all quite glamorous and and exciting but there is darkness beneath the glitter and I'm really intrigued to to see what happens with this and uh, but also yeah just feels like a book that evokes the the spirit of the season. A new novel which gives off such Dickensian vibes is Lily by Rose Tremaine which is subtitled A Tale of Revenge and the description of the story um, sounds like it, it is a kind of like Dickensian type story because it's about a baby girl that's abandoned at the entrance of a park in London in 1850 and uh, she's uh, taken, she's rescued by a policeman and uh, and taken to an orphanage and adopted by a family and taken out to uh, grow up on a rural farm in Suffolk. Uh, but then she uh, gets into some trouble and uh, returns to London and becomes an apprentice to a wig maker. Um, but she has a slightly dark past to her story and um, she meets again the police officer that rescued her and uh, and uh, it's, so it's about their relationship but also the mystery of, of her past and it sounds like such an intriguing story. I, I love Rose Tremaine's writing. Um, she's written a lot of books, um, but I, I love, I've loved her novel The Gustav Sonata and um, her short story collection um, The American Lover. And uh, so yeah, she's, she's an excellent writer that, that can, seems to write in many different genres and, and styles, um, but this you know, really seems to um, capture that Dickensian vibe and, you know, and that's the kind of thing that I want to read around wintertime. Lean Fall Stand by John McGregor. And this is a novel which I've been saving to read for the, the winter time because, you know, there, there are some books which we sort of save to, to read over certain seasons because obviously you can read a book at any time of the year and it doesn't really matter and, and I know some people on, on Booktube have objected to books you know being reserved for certain seasons uh, but you know when you do read in a particular season a particular kind of story um, it can add to the atmosphere and the, the feeling of and experience of, of reading a story and uh, and so yeah I've been saving this um, because it begins with an Antarctic adventure um, that goes wrong, an Antarctic expedition um, that, that goes wrong and uh, that has many consequences and the story follows um, th those many consequences. So I think the, the Antarctic part is, is only just part of the story but um, and I find John McGregor's writing really intriguing and uh, and insightful and, and interesting both his style of writing and the subject matters that he writes about um, I think are, are so original um, that I'm really intrigued to see where this story goes. Now I also want some books that give me a a bit of comfort over this time because there, the world is still very troubled and uh, so one book um, that 
I think is going to give me uh, some great, like, small pleasures is uh, this book called The Joy of Small Things by Hannah Jane Parkinson. And in this book, um, she makes a lot of observations about small things in everyday life that give her uh, a lot of pleasure. And uh, and I, I think that it'll just be like such a, a joy to read about. Um, Nigella Lawson um, gives a quote for it where she says, uh, not so small joy in itself. And uh, I sort of trust Nigella Lawson's judgment because um, I went to see her talk at the South Bank Center recently and it was such a pleasurable um, event. She um, just sort of got on stage and was talking about her, her theories about uh, cooking and eating and uh, but also like everyday life and um, yeah and the and she's somebody I think that you know really finds joy in these sort of small things that we we find in our everyday life and and I think this book is gonna reflect that and just be a, a kind of pleasure to read uh, something that gives me joy in my everyday life is drinking tea I'm a really heavy tea drinker um, so I've got my big mug here my big golden girls mug um, which I love to show off every once in a while and I, I love that the golden girls has been going through a kind of revival recently um, because it's been on the the subscription channel Disney plus and um, the, all of the series are there and um, so I've been enjoying so much going through and re-watching a lot of this series. I mean I always re-watch them recently but it's just great to have the convenience of it there on a digital service to, to be accessing so yeah I've been loving that but there's also a novel called Wild Marjoram Tea by Sylvia Littlegood Briggs and uh, this is a novel I've been wanting to, to get to um, because it is slightly about tea and you can uh, there, there's a quote in here from a man that says my tea goes through 16 fortifications and uh, but also comments that the tea opens up the interior like all humans you're filled with closed rooms and uh, I, I like the sound of that but it's also a kind of fable like story about two teenagers that go into the woods and disappear um, forever and um, and so it's sort of the the story of that and and invokes this fable like feel and I, I think that's the, the kind of story and, um, you know, the kind of genre of story that I want over the winter time. The Weak Spot by Lucy Elvin. And this is a short novel um, which gives me wintry vibes because it's set on a mountain top in uh, Europe that's only accessed by a funicular. And whenever I think of a funicular, I just think of yeah, big mountains and like snowy cliff sides. And, uh, and it's, so it's a, it's a very remote town and in the there's a, a small pharmacy in this town where people go to divulge the secrets of their lives and it's about a woman that goes to become an apprentice at this pharmacy and uh, and she finds the pharmacist there um, over time he begins to get more power in this town. He becomes mayor of the town partly through all of the secrets he knows about the, the people in this township. And so there's something slightly sinister going on in this this town. And the, the story follows that. And um, yeah, so sounds really intriguing. And uh, yeah, the right kind of atmosphere for this time of year. A more recent newer novel that's also happens to be set in a remote European uh, mountainous town is is What Happens at Night by Peter Cameron. And this story is about an American couple um, that wants to an adopt a child. Um, so they, they come to this European town and they worry that their chances of adopting the child will be uh, hindered because the, the wife is suffering from cancer. And uh, But they spend time in this city um, trying to adopt this child and have a number of encounters with the locals that are both positive and negative. And, um, and it describes uh, at the end of this that nothing is as it seems in this mysterious frozen world. And the longer the couple endure the punishing colds, the less they seem to know about their marriage themselves and life itself. And I find Peter Cameron's writing really intriguing. And um, so I've been wanting to read more of his work and um, yeah, really excited to get to this new novel. I've also been wanting to read some more nonfiction that is uh, more 
biographical and uh, sort of reflecting on particular lives. Uh, so I'd like to read Exteriors by Annie Ernaux, uh, which is a collection of journal entries uh, that Ernaux wrote over a seven year period and are concentrating on the sort of peripheral things that make up our everyday lives. And uh, so it sounds slightly similar to the joy of small things, but I think uh, takes some slightly more like philosophical and sociological stance on it. Um, I love Annie Arnaud's writing. It, she's so insightful about uh, how our lives interact with the, the larger society. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of insight in, um, in these small entries that she makes. Black Teacher by Beryl Gilroy, um, which was first published in 1976, uh, but it was just republished recently uh, with a forward by Bernardine Evaristo. And this is uh, the story of Beryl Gilroy, um, who left her home in British Guyana in uh, 1952 and moved to London as, as part of the uh, Windrush generation. And uh, here she encountered a lot of the uh, racism in uh, post-World War II uh, England, uh, but she also made a new life for herself and started this revolutionary career in, in education. And uh, you see some photographs of, of her with the pupils she taught. So I'm really intrigued to find out more about her story, and I, I think it's one that'll be newly relatable, um, as a lot of people are experiencing that they uh, have had big changes in their careers or had to find new careers um, during the, the past two years. And uh, so, so yeah, this sounds like an excellent book. A new nonfiction book, which I think will be slightly more indulgent, is uh, The Woman of Rothschild by Natalie Livingstone. And so the Rothschild family, uh, this famous European banking dynasty. Uh, the, the Rothschild name is just synonymous, uh, I think, with power and privilege and wealth. And a lot has been written about the Rothschild's men, uh, but not so much has been written about the women in this family. And so Natalie Livingstone writes about the, the women of this family uh, over the generations and uh, their accomplishments, the, the difficulty they faced as uh, coming from this Jewish family in largely Christian communities and uh, the, the people they encountered and the achievements they, they made in themselves um, alongside the men in this family. And uh, so, yeah, I think this will just be like such a pleasure to read. I'd also like to read some poetry over the winter months. And so there's this beautiful uh, new edition of the Duono Elegies uh, by Rainer Maria Rilke, um, which is like blue and white and so gives off uh, this kind of wintry vibe vibes. Um, but also the poems, I think, will uh, be really meaningful to read because uh, Rilke was uh, considered one of the, the greatest writers of his time in um, the uh, late 19th and early 20th century. And uh, these these poems um, are, they, they invoke uh, a lot of kind of spiritual imagery, but take a, a slightly different stance um, from what is normally written about. Because Rilke is someone that, that suffered from depression and so wrestled with a lot of like ex existential angst. And, um, and so these poems really address that. And finally, I have a book of short stories because um, like I talk about often, uh, I, I like to read short stories aloud to my partner. And I think it'll just be a wonderful thing to do together um, over the winter months. And, um, and something that can also be done over video calls um, if you're still not able to, to meet people in person. Um, so I also have the selected stories of Elizabeth Bowen um, who was an Irish writer of uh, the early 20th century. And um, so these are a section of her stories. And I, I've read some of them um, already and think they're so excellent. They're really psychologically insightful uh, and also finely detailed and just like such a, a pleasure to read. Um, she, she gets at the real uh, 
cattiness of, of some human relationships in a way that's that's really pleasurable. Um, but uh, but yeah, is is also wonderfully uh, emotional. And uh, so yeah, and uh, and also the the spine of this and um, some of the colors of this like light blue and white give me slight wintry vibes. Um, so yeah, I think they'll be good short stories to read over the winter months over a cup of tea or a mug of hot chocolate. So uh, so those are the books that I'm hoping to read over the winter months. I'd love to know if you've read any of these uh, or if you have other books that you're planning to read over the winter months. Uh, please let me know about them in the comments below. But I hope you're doing well and staying warm inside and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.